Today, I want to teach you how to use Digo. Let's jump right in. Digo stands for Digest of Internet Information Groups and Other Stuff. I know it sounds weird, but that's really what it stands for. And here is what it does. So when you find a source on the web, you want to remember where that is. Most of us bookmark it to our bookmark bar. And that means that we are tied to that machine. Well, what if you're on another machine and you want to find that website that you had? Digo is at the very least a place where you bookmark the stuff that you want to save and you're bookmarking it to the cloud. So it's not local on your browser. And that means that you can access it anywhere, anytime. If your machine dies, you still have all of your bookmarks. You don't have to worry about exporting them. It also means that it's really easy to share with other people and learning is about sharing. That's the key here. So you can collect your bookmarks easily and you can annotate web pages. Basically that means you can highlight passages and you can also leave a little private sticky note for yourself on the web page that you've just highlighted. You can organize your bookmarks by tags, whatever keywords are relevant to you. Of course, you can share it with your friends. You can create groups. If you're working on a group project together, you can create a group and everybody on that project puts all of their bookmarks in that group. That way you're not sort of emailing back and forth. So the first thing you need to do is come on over to digo.com. That's two eyes, D-I-I-G-O.com and sign up and activate your account. Go to your email and you'll have to click the link and you're in. The next thing I'm going to ask you to do is to go over to the Chrome Web Store by clicking right here. And search for the Digo extension that's going to sit on your browser. And if you're not a Chrome user, you can add the Digolet extension to your Safari browser from Digo's website. Now you see that the extension has been added, which means when I'm ready to annotate web pages, I simply click here. So let's put Digo to use. I'm at the online textbook that we're using in this course, and I'm going to select something from the first chapter. How about psychology is a science? And I'm going to try to highlight and annotate this web page with my Digo extension. So I'm at this section about psychology, empirical methods, and the scientific method. And I've read the first paragraph, and now I want to begin reading the second paragraph. And I see that there's something interesting here in the first sentence that I want to highlight. Click on the Digolet extension. And you have a couple of options. The first one is you can save the bookmark. And the next one is the one that I'm going to use right now to read and to annotate my page. Click on that. And what it does is to strip away the non-essentials from the web page that you're looking at so that you can see a really clean, pared down version of the text that you want to read. So here's the line that I was looking at that I want to highlight. I'm just simply going to select it. And when I select it, I have a color that I can choose from. I generally just choose yellow for the stuff that I want to highlight. And if it's really important, then I might choose to highlight it in blue or in pink or something like that. So I'm going to highlight that. So I have highlighted one more sentence here about values being personal statements and facts being objective statements. And I want to make a sticky note for that. So click on this teeny weeny little icon right there and you can add whatever note you want. This note can be private. You can also, if you've created a group, share it to whatever group that you have and save it. When you reload this web page, your highlights and your sticky notes will be there. Let's go back to the Digo library and see what our highlights and our notes look like. Click on the Digolet extension and right down here, this teeny weeny little cube will bring you back to your Digo library. Let's go back to the Digo library and see what our highlighting and notes look like. 
click on your Deagle LED extension to go back to your library and all the way at the bottom find this little cube. It will bring you back to your library. Otherwise, you can just log back in Deagle.com. So here's the work that we just did right up here. We see that we have three highlights and here we have added a note. It doesn't show us what the note is, but this is the work that we've just done. Now, from here, if you wanted to share this, you could get a shareable link right there, or you could actually even email it to somebody else. So much for highlighting pages and leaving sticky notes. How are you going to use Digo to help you read your online textbook and take notes? So I'm back at the online textbook and I'm in chapter four, all about the brain and I'm looking at the neuron and I have done some highlighting here. I want to show you how you're going to use this to help you take good notes. If you click on this little D that you should see here, expand your toolbar, you will see that here, of course, you can choose the color that you're highlighting with. You can leave a sticky note I've already shown you. This is to show you that you've already um, bookmarked this page and you can also add extra information like tags and share to a group or make it not private, etc. But I want to show you this. Click on these little lines right here and you'll see all of the annotations that you've made on this one page show up. If you copy them all, you see it's added to the clipboard and come over to your Google Doc that I'm going to ask you to make. So first thing is you need to give it a title. So Brain Chapter 4 Notes and then please add your last name in there so that I can tell whose work is whose. Now I've got this added to my clipboard and I'm going to copy paste it onto my Google Doc. So I'm going to choose a font that is nice and easy to see, do a command V and I get this teeny weeny little text that's just insane. It's too small. So I'm not going to be able to read that. Neither are you. Select a, a larger text and here's the thing. What you've done here is copy pasted directly from your textbook onto your Google Doc. These are not the notes that I want to see. Why I'm showing you this is just so that you can simply easily go from the textbook to your Google Doc, get your highlighting pasted in, and then from there make your own notes. In other words, you've got to put this in your own words. If you give me copy pasted text from the book, I'm not going to consider this as your own notes. How do you make your copy pasting your own notes? Simple. Put it in your own words. Some of you might be wondering if it's even worth copy pasting from your textbook onto a Google Doc if you can't submit that as your own notes. The only reason that I'm suggesting you copy paste your annotations from the textbook is simply because I think it's easier than working with a split screen such as you see. So here I've got the textbook on one side, my Google Doc on the next, and I can be reading and taking notes as I go. But I personally don't like to work like that. If, if you're good working like that, then go ahead and work with a split screen. But I think that if you read your text carefully, make your annotations and your highlights, and then copy paste those annotations and highlights over to a Google, Google Doc, from there, it'll be easier to then turn that into something that is your own. So here's what it might look like when you put your copy pasted annotations into your own words. So you can see the bottom part here is what I copy pasted and the top part is me having understood the material and expressed it in a way that when I come back to my notes, I'm going to understand. The other thing that I suggest that you do, apart from say listing it, don't use bullet points, but listing it like this, um, is to copy any important diagrams or visuals that are going to help you understand. So if you're on a Mac, 
um, or even if you're on a PC, you know, we all have our own way of doing screenshots and you can certainly do that here. But this is what Digo allows me to do. So it will allow me to take a screenshot of this visual and also mark it up, which I think is really great. There are other programs out there that will do the same thing, but because you're already in Digo and I'm already teaching you how to do it, why not use this? So click on your extension, come down to annotate the screenshot and click and drag the part that you want to turn into a, I think it's a PNG file. So down here at the bottom, I can select this, maybe select a blue color and I can put squares around terms. I can draw arrows if I want. Now it's blue, but I can also make that arrow red. And I can leave uh, text here for myself. So this is a myelin sheath and it's going to make me think of Vaseline. And after you hear me talk in class or after you've seen some of my videos, you'll understand why that might make you think of Vaseline. Uh, this over here is going to make me think of uh, tree branches because that's what they look like. And anything else that I want to remind myself of um, that would be important, either something that I heard uh, on a video or uh, something that I read from the, the text. And so now I've got this great annotated screenshot and I'm going to save it. Click on the, the, the old floppy disk here, that's a hoot. And you can attach it to the bookmarked page that you've got or you can keep it as a standalone item. It doesn't really matter, but I'll tag it as a standalone item and it tells me that it's being saved to Digo. So let's go and take a look and see what it looks like. So there's my annotated screenshot right here. It's a different one that I've already done. And what I want to do is, well, of course, I can download it and keep it in my um, docs, but I'm going to share it out and I'm going to grab this little code right over here. Command C, copy that. And I'm going to come over to my Google Doc and I'm going to paste it in. So now I want to insert that image, come on over into insert image by URL and insert it into your document. So here, this is so much better than just doing a screenshot. Um, and, but, but mind you, the screenshot's okay too, but this look, guys, look how great this is because you've got your own annotations that you have added to your screenshot. Now, these are very fine notes. On top of that, to your notes, now this has got nothing to do with Digo, but you could also leave extra notes to yourself here um, to help you, let's say if you're studying in a group and you've got a chat open here with your friends and you're doing this together, leave extra annotations or extra comments to yourself so that you can remember what's going on. So that's a brief introduction to Digo. There's lots more to learn. We'll see it as we go throughout the course. This is how you're going to take the best notes possible using this tool, annotating and highlighting both pages and screenshots. That's it for now, folks.